गुड मॉर्निंग सर यूजिंग सिस्टम This event is organized by the Trisonic College of Engineering, Nagpur, in association with IEEE 2021 Region 10, IEEE Bombay Section, and IEEE Nagpur Sub Section. Under IEEE 2021 Region 10 Capacity Building Workshop under Educational Activity and COE IOT. For those of you who are not much aware of IEEE. IEEE is the world's largest technical professional organization dedicated to advancing technology for the benefit of humanity. IEEE and its members inspire a global community to innovate for a better tomorrow. So various conferences, highly cited publications, technology centers, and professional and educational activities. IEEE is a trusted voice for engineering, computing. and technology information around the globe let's begin our today's inaugural program by seeking the blessing of master kadi the very goddess of knowledge and art represents the free flow of wisdom and consciousness she is the mother of vedas a chant directed to her all the saraswati vandana often be the end the declaration so to have blessings and marking and marking the start of an event I would request Assistant Professor IT Department Professor Sankara Vatilwar to recite Saraswati Vandana at seal the meet with all the positive energy. Jai Jai Hi Anandhati Sarvayati Chavacharya Pramama Jai Jai Hi thank you sir main uh, good morning uh, one and all present here today uh, this is uh, dr v satyanand sir chair ethically bond section dr abhay gandhi sir chair ethically uh, nakpur section our below uh, director dr sachin agarwal sir jee sir ki nakpur deputy director the head faculty and dear participants on the behalf of gsrc uh, nakpur i dr lakshman patri coordinator welcome you all for inaugural function of the workshop on iot application using android system sponsored by iipbly designing capacity building workshop under educational activity 
I thought that here time code, I typically reason time, I typically boundary section, and I typically in approved subsection for exceptional and unconditional support to us for two days online workshop on very challenging areas of IoT and embedded system. For this two days of workshop, total uh, six speakers uh, from IIT Indore, Institute of uh, Industrial and Computer Management, Research Pune. JG SIP University Pune, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research Chennai are invited for sessions and workshop uh, for this workshop. The resource persons as a speaker who will deliver the guest lectures uh, and uh, hands on are Dr. Vimal Bhatia from IIT Indore, Dr. Kudnath Shankar, Professor, Institute of Industrial and Computer Management and Research Pune. Dr. Ajay Vishnu, Director, Center for Industrial Mathematics, uh, Pune. Dr. Rahul Jawari, DG, SIP, University of Varsha, Delhi. Dr. Ranji Kalidas, Bharat Institute of Higher Education uh, and, and Research, Chennai. Sir, uh, we have received more than uh, 232 uh, participants from different institutes like Government College of Engineering, Jairam, JRT Institute of Engineering and Technology, Tamil Nadu. YCC Nagpur, uh, uh, Government Faculty of Ahmedabad, Veltech High Tech uh, College of uh, Engineering, uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, Saraswati Vidyalaya, Nagpur, Shivaji Rao Jonave College of uh, Engineering, uh, Assam Gautane, DKPA Society Textile Engineering Institute, Vishal Karimji, KIT uh, Group of Institutes in uh, Gaziabad, and many more. This two workshop uh, of, uh, will be of full energy and knowledgeable for all the participants. So, uh, all the participants are requested to attend all the sessions. So, I am now very much thankful to uh, honor Honorable Chairman Sir, Mr. Shivaji Raisani, Respected Director Sir, um, uh, Sachin Udwale Sir, for kind support and thankful to workshop team members. Also, I am thankful to Organization unit, I typically reason time, I typically boundary section, I typically Nakpur subsection. Okay, this uh, YCC Nakpur, TIT Nakpur, Cummins College of Engineering Nakpur, for their support uh, for signing this proposal uh, of uh, fund. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. The reason behind the success of GHRC is the collective effort of its owners, management, faculty, and the students. But we would have been directionless without the excellent dynamic leadership of our director, Dr. Sachin Nankwala. I would like to request sir to kindly address the audience. Thank you, Shumai. Yes, sir, you are audible properly. Yes, sir. Good morning to one and all present here. Chief Justice of the Event, Dr. B. Satyanarayana, Chair IEEE Bombay Section, Mr. Honor, Dr. Abhay Gandhi, Chair IEEE Apostle Section, IEEE Branch Counselor at the HRC and Coordinator of the Workshop, Dr. Ashwin Sakhi, Deputy Directors, Teams of various portfolios, Heads of various departments, faculty members, Participants, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of GH Raisuni College of Engineering and I welcome all present here to the inaugural ceremony of IoT applications you will be discussing. And I triple E through zero to the capacity building workshop under COE IoT educational activity. Organized by GH Raisuni College of Engineering NASA in association with I triple E region. I triple E Bombay section and I triple E Nagpur subsection. At the outset, I sincerely thank I triple E Bombay Nagpur subsection for Bombay section and Nagpur subsection for bestowing us this opportunity. Sir, the GS Raisuni College of Engineering is an autonomous institution established in 1996 and is ranked 139 in NIRS. We are ranked second in the self finance institutions category awarded by the Ministry of Education of India in the actual ranking of institutions on innovation achievement 2020 and bestowed with a five star rating by the Innovation Cell Ministry of Education Government of India. We have recently been conferred with the platinum ranking by the Confederation of Indian Industry for our Imperial Industry. So two of our team members have received 
AICT emerged hot and recently two of our startups have been shortlisted at the UP 2.0 Ministry of Education, Government of India. The recent advancements in the computational techniques, such as the machine learning, Internet of Things, and embedded systems accelerate the deployment of devices in various engineering applications. In this era and in the future, the AI machines will replace and play a key role to enhance the human capabilities in many areas. It will also make life style better by providing convenience to all, including the normal human beings and professionals as well. The applications of embedded systems and IoT sector are working in many areas with huge impact and is being used widely as well. This is providing quality and efficiency in almost every area we are evolving in. I am sure that this workshop will be helpful in exploring this area and I wish this will lead to more innovations and research. These testing times of the current pandemic will go and all of us together will provide the best faculty best facilities and initiatives to all of our stakeholders and we sincerely believe that it is our moral responsibility to gain knowledge and spread this knowledge in terms of these types of workshops to the future generation who will take care of the future technology and build a strong ecosystem that is extremely required for our, for our country. I once again welcome the guests and the participants to the workshop and I am sure that this workshop will certainly have many takeaways for the part. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your kind words and for always standing and supporting with us. I typically follow up section has always been in top names, be it conducting workshops, coordinating and helping other partners around us. And bring you love with you always. This has been possible only because of the core members and with an excellent leadership of chair. Mm -hmm. I now request chair of IEEE Bomber section, Dr. B. Satya Narayana, to address the audience. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks so much for the nice uh, kind words and introduction. Um, sorry for joining late. There was some technical problem, so it took some time to mitigate that. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy to join today uh, all of you on the on the call uh, for the inauguration of the workshop on IoT applications using embedded systems and uh, as uh, many of the speakers mentioned, uh, this is under uh, the ITB 2021 R10 UTM 10 capacity building uh, workshop under the Center of Excellence of IoT and Education Activity. And of course, this is being organized by ESI for the Engineering Transport, which is a well-known education institute in the in Maharashtra and also in the country. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the director, sir, Dr. Sachin, uh, Dolly, uh, Dr. Blackson, Dr. Uh, the attorney, and uh, the ICT branch counselor and coordinator of the workshop, and of course, my colleague, uh, Dr. Abhay Gandhi, the chair of ICT market Uh Since the, this new committee, uh, the so called MPA to come to the court, a few months ago, uh, we have been giving a lot of emphasis on uh, by various student branches as well as other members to actually write good quality uh, grant proposals both to the, to, the, to the section, to the region, then to which we belong to and also the headquarters. And I have been also advocating very strongly that we must also be nominating ourselves to various, uh, you know, honors and awards that the uh, ICP um, of that source from people uh, with the good volume skills. Now, uh, why I started this by saying uh, that within this last, uh, I would say, four five months, since about March, uh, a large number of such grant proposals, like what you see a result of that today, uh, resulting in this workshop, have been written by my colleagues in ICP, uh, from the section, from the section, of course, and from uh, a large number of colleges, universities, and uh, you know, institution spread out Maharashtra, Gawa, Manipulation, Chhattisgarh. And I'm really glad to say many of those proposals have been now, uh, you know, been actually uh, granted and the funding has come and a large number of persons and uh, events are undergone. And uh, so, uh, and equally important is that when the part of IT uh volunteering, you know, like this is not our job of uh, what a 
really earned our bread and butter, but something which is uh, something which will give us very you know real satisfaction and happiness because we are volunteering something for the uh, for the benefit of our student members in particular and of course the IT team members at large. Now, when you do such thing, unless you report it, unless you actually write down and show and share with others, then the entire effort gets unnoticed naturally because if you don't uh, report, nobody knows that you have actually done like this. This is like saying I have done a certain research work, but I never wrote a paper, uh, you know, publish, uh, you know, pub, pub, uh, publishing you know, basically the paper, then nobody would know, right? So somebody else, of course, would get them because so always remember that you must always document the kind of work or uh, the research work or volunteer work or uh, any of these things like what you are calling uh, properly uh, kind of, you know, reported to the concern. Uh, okay. Now, uh, coming to the Bombay section, of course, as uh, some of the speakers mentioned before, uh, we have been now geared up to organize not only just large number of workshops and student activities and, uh, you know, it is congresses and meetings and so on, but also uh, we are poised to organize very, very high impact events this year. Uh, of course, starting the very, uh, you know, very next month, we are going to have a big event in your own space, uh, in our city last school, uh, the event called Indistan, which I'm sure my colleague will talk about it. And uh, followed by that, we have the uh, section signature conference called IBS is coming up in November. And uh, later that, uh, you know, later this year, we'll also have the so-called student activities, WIE and uh, YP Congress that is going to come up. And the faculty congress is going to come early next year. But uh, the event to look uh, forward to is uh, the region 10 signature event for 10th in uh, 2020, which is going to happen in July. And uh, that's a thought. In fact, as we are speaking here, a very nice workshop on entrepreneurship is happening online, uh, you know, in Mumbai, of course, but it's an online event where 4,000 uh, participants are registered and participating in it. So the point is that unless you really bring the event calendar up and working live, uh, the, the kind of main uh, practice and dissemination of many technology areas to, to our students is not going to be useful and beneficial. Today, of course, when we talk about the workshop on IoT, and I'm not going to impact the principles are as nicely summarize uh, the field of IoT, but and these experts, you know, embedded systems and IoT have been kind of backbone. And for the current technology space, in particular in the, in the context of industry 4.0 and 5.0 to that extent. The fueling of technology uh, states on the uh, communication standards like 5G, etc., other more uh, the advancement in this area. But what I really wanted to kind of say one minute about the, uh, you know, the, the applications that are surrounding IoT is not something new, and we have been kind of using the principal that on IoT for a long, long time. But what really spurred this major technology advancement is, uh, you know, the availability or uh, you know, low power sensors, which is again a, a part of an outcome from not necessarily the field that we are working here today, but also as far as the days of, you know, like uh, material science, laser applications, and so on. The self-organizing wireless sensor network, which has been another major area of strategy in the landscape of privacy. The low weight data acquisition systems to pick up the data from the fields which are often, you know, harnessed by solar power and so on. And how do you get very, very low weight applications, uh, data acquisition applications? And uh, one thing that comes very immediately, I would say, along with IoT application field, the, the possibility of, you know, the data security, you know, that brings a big challenge because one hand you talk about low power and so on, on the other hand you want to also not compromise on the data security. So that is, uh, you know, development. And uh, how do you deploy these sensors in a vast field like in the applications mainly, you know, today we talk about IoT, the major emerging areas are medicine and agriculture. In the agriculture, how do you and so they are actually deployed in large uh, scale. And, uh, you know, these are, I think, some of those areas that one must remember, uh, and I'm sure during the rest of the workshop, we are going to be dealt with the work, uh, the experts, 
that uh, you know our clients to kind of take the most of the forward area. Right? So I think uh, these are some of the things that I thought I will kind of bring up uh, today to you to say that uh, we are right now poised very very well. Uh, both from the point of view of the academic research and industry and to work on the data IoT there. So therefore, of course, training ourselves into this will give a head start for the students to latch on to these technologies when they go out of college, whether they start something on their own like the startup or they go ahead and join a kind of corporate sector. But actually, these are very, very important to get into it. I'm sure this workshop is going a long way. Uh, to kind of give to that gap. And once again, I uh, kind of congratulate uh, the organizers, of course, led daily by our production project. And I wish uh, the workshop is answered. Thank you very much for being Thank you so much, sir, for your words of gratitude. Uh, and uh, we are really uh, humbled to have you with us today. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have with us another eminent personality leading the IPP Nagpur subsection, flawlessly and helping the section to grow high. It's none other than chair of IPP Nagpur subsection, Dr. Abhay Gandhi. I request her to kindly address the audience. Uh, I hope I am audible. <coughs> yes, sir. Yes. Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, Professor Satya, uh, Bombay Section Chair, uh, Dr. Sachin Untawale, Director of GHRCE, Dr. Lakshman Thakre, Branch uh, Counselor at uh, GH Rajmundi College, other uh, team members and uh, dear attendees. It is also a very, uh, I mean, uh, I am uh, really thankful uh, that uh, you have invited me and uh, given me an opportunity to share, uh, spend some time with you all and uh, share a few uh, thoughts and a few uh, moments with you. Uh, GS Rasmi College has always been uh, very actively uh, associated with IEEE uh, since a very long time and uh, I am happy that uh, the trend continues uh, in this uh, year also. Uh, as uh, all of us uh, are witnessing uh, the uh, uh, the pandemic uh, has impacted uh, all our spheres of life, but uh, I don't have to, uh, it is obvious that it is only because of uh, the already widespread uh, deployment of uh, communication technology and the related applications and software that uh, work from home was possible in a big way and uh, we could uh, actually uh, keep a lot many industries going and keep lot many things going on. Uh, because of the uh, these all these applications, uh, just uh, two years ago, no one was knowing there is something called WebEx or Zoom, but now everyone is using them uh, as if it is a daily uh, matter. Uh, just like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, now equally frequently we are using this uh, uh, WebEx and Zoom. I wonder, uh, even if this uh, pandemic had come 20 years ago. I don't think uh, we would have been able to cope, it, to cope up with it uh, the way we are being able to do it now. So the point is that uh, the communication technology is a foundation. It was there in place. But all these applications also need to be developed and matured and deployed on a large scale. And then you can see their impact on the society. And the same thing is bound to happen with uh, Internet of Things. The overall motto of uh, uh, IEEE, uh, what I have observed is uh, connecting the unconnected. So right now we are witnessing the impact of uh, people being connected so easily with each other and they are able to collaborate and work uh, so easily. So now the next wave is going to be connecting the unconnected. So whatever is left unattended or unconnected, ultimately it will be connected to the network and some very new interesting applications uh, uh, will be coming up. So if uh, these are all the things that are going to happen, obviously one thing that is required is a large number of people uh, who are trained uh, for uh, this area and who understand uh, the nitty gritty. See, uh, knowing basic principles is essential, but it is not sufficient. Uh, if one has to work uh, on that area, then uh, knowing the fine details of that area are also equally important and uh, that is the kind of uh, need uh, I am sure this uh, workshop will uh, uh, 
Qatar too, and uh, all the uh, attendees will benefit uh, out of uh, uh, their involvement in this uh, uh, in this uh, workshop. And as Professor Sapta rightly pointed out, uh, we have the uh, Indiscon conference uh, coming up uh, at the end of August, and uh, the conference is uh, theme is uh, uh, the uh, uh, impactful innovations for uh, industry and society. So uh, we have invited uh, papers mainly in the 5G and uh, IoT and uh, similarly automation, industry 4.0, uh, all these things, virtualization. So I request all of you to go to the website of uh, Indiscon 2021 and you will see that uh, most of the topics uh, are very much related to this uh, workshop. So uh, it is kind of a good sequence that uh, you can uh, uh, come to know the basics uh, and some fine things in the workshop and then down the line uh, you can attend the conference and uh, get an idea as to what is the exact uh, status of uh, research uh, in this field. Because uh, research is very important, uh, out of that outcome only some of the things are picked up and they get deployed and then uh, everyone uh, benefits. So, uh, uh, research is the starting point for uh, all that and uh, all the academic fraternity, even the industry, uh, if uh, they invest into research, uh, they are basically working for the future. So, uh, I am quite glad that uh, all of you are contributing to this uh, national uh, uh, effort and uh, you are also uh, like uh, going, uh, working along the tagline of uh, IQ. Humanity. So I'm quite glad uh, to see that. Uh, my all the best wishes uh, for the workshop, and uh, I would also be very happy if uh, some of you uh, register and attend the upcoming uh, Indiscon 2021. Also, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. Uh, thanks to all the guests for taking out their precious time and gracing the inaugural function. Here, we have come to an end of the inaugural function and we will be moving towards the workshop after this. But before that, leaving with our tradition and considering it to be a new novel, I now request everyone to kindly stand for the national anthem. <laughs>
peers in communication and networking and wireless communication letters. We are grateful to have you sir with us. I now request you to kindly proceed with the session. Over to you sir. Sir, am I audible? Sir, you can tell your PPT. You are not present there. Sir, your voice is not audible. Your voice is not audible. Hello? Yeah. Sir, voice is not clear. Is the volume low? Hello? Hello? Sir, voice is not clear. Hello? Hello? Sir, it's not audible. It's not audible. It's not audible. We are not able to hear me at all. Now it's uh, right. what is the word? Can you hear me now? Uh, not clear. Uh, is it audible now? Yes, sir. It is audible right now. Audible? Okay. So, still I'm audible then? Uh, yes, sir. You can share it. Yes. Yeah. 
Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, Just the audio turn off. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Like, it is very low. We can hear you, but... There's okay. a very slight improvement in the uh, volume. Volume is low. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes. Now we can hear you, sir, properly. Okay. Okay. Only one 
హలో 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 ఎస్ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ నాట్ క్లియర్ యూర్ ఆడియోబల్ బట్ నాట్ క్లియర్ సార్ నోట్ ఓడే వాళ్ళు నోట్ 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 ఓడే సార్ హలో హలో ఇస్ దిస్ బెటర్ నో Yes, so we can hear you now. Okay, so I think I want to come closer to the... Uh, in that case, so you can turn off your video and then come closer to the, your device, so that it would be better. Okay, okay, let me do that. Uh, now you can hear me, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you for coming. Okay.
Sir, till the time uh, we want to join, we can uh, share a CPT on the screen, no? Last one, sir. Yes. Now we can a PPT of, uh, and we, we can bring the CPT of email sir's bio. Yes, so we can. The outline slide. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, go on this, uh, okay. So, I don't know what is IoT. IoT refers 
to a system of interrelated interconnected objects that are able to collect and transfer data over a wireless network without human intervention. Third is the interworking and the networking of physical devices such as meters, vision. So it's not that's limited to uh, uh, only uh, a certain thing, which is limited to meters, buildings, uh, human beings, anything. So that's a problem thing. And then embedded with electronics, so there is some, some electronics that is there. We have a, a software which is running on it. Then we have sensors, actuators, and network connectors that enable these objects to uh, connect and exchange data. So, IDOT, as uh, you know, as International Telecom Union, it is a standardization making body for our telecom area. So we have, uh, um, so they saw there was a big expected in the IoT market and IoT arena. So IoT can be viewed, so what they come up with their own definition that IoT can be viewed as a global infrastructure for the information society enabling advanced services by interconnecting. So we had things like WSN, so wireless sensor network or sensor network in the past, but here there's a change that they said that enabling advanced services by interconnecting. So ITUT, which is the International Telecom Union, they give in their recommendation, which is shown below, the source, recommendation ITUT Y.2016. So in that recommendation, they've given a definition for IoT, um, is that the things are connected both virtually or physically, things based on existing and evolving interoperable ICT infrastructure. Because over the years, the ICT infrastructure will change. It's a very fast moving area, uh, fast moving technology. So every 10 years, we see one new G D address, we have one G G, G, for the now we're looking at ID. So IEEE, 
uh, also came up with things like why not, um, some of you might have heard about it, but somehow uh, over the last two decades we have seen that IEEE standards they are very successful in indoor type of environment, whereas when we go outside or we need mobility, then we go for the ITU. So we are no, uh, in our homes are connected to Wi-Fi and when we are outside we are connected to our 3G, 4G, uh, uh, 4G networks or something. So uh, this is how somehow um, the, the industry and the users are now getting uh, and got used to it in the last you know, two decades. So ITU thought there was a big revolution coming in IoT and they came up with their own definition of um, IoT and this definition is in their recommendation why the 2060. So what are the fundamental characteristics of the IoT network? So IoT networks are interconnected um, with regards to IoT, so anything and everything that needs to be connected somehow. Then heterogeneity. Now you can use different standards, but they should be able to talk to each other. Right? For uh, uh, heterogeneous means it could be, and also it, IoT does not mean that you have to take a particular hardware or a particular software. So you're not trying to hardware or the software. You can use any of those. And you are connected to, to a network. Now, uh, these devices or service platforms, they will talk to each other to the, the internet, basically. So that's for the internet of things. Then it should also be uh, uh, characterized by dynamic changes because uh, uh, the systems or things are any dynamic. The scale is there, that is the next slide actually, but uh, other things I can say about dynamic that you might have different sensors which are let's say mounted on the, uh, they're mounted on, on a vehicle. So if they're mounted on a vehicle and the vehicle is uh, moving, then you will be uh, the sensor that is connected or the device that is connected in the region would be seeing different channels, right? It would be because it is moving, there will be different type of settings, there will be different realization, and maybe there will be certain conditions where let's say you are moving to a tunnel or on the, the back side of the uh, hill, you might lose connection. So they, there are dynamic changes. Other things could be that some of the devices or sensors would be uh, sitting on, like will be in a sleep mode and then wake up mode. For instance, if you have a sensor, like a temperature sensor, which needs to, you have put it in your farm or your campus. So in your campus, there is a thing one corner, you have put this temperature sensor. It will sense the temperature and then send you all the humidity levels or something which may need some information to be sent. But only it doesn't need to send it all the time. It can send it across, say once in an hour, once in two hours, depending on your need. Right. But if you compare this with, let's say, the other uh, type of uh, uh, sensor, let's say they are in the in a chemical plant, which is controlling the boiling temperature, or, or maybe in the in the foundry, so there there might be need to have an instantaneous value of the um, uh, temperature known. Right, so uh, there are these two different applications. So for one application, you might need connected all the time. Whereas in other cases, you may not need all the time. So there are the changes, the, the, the situation and things are changing dynamically. Right. So they uh, need to be, the so IoT network needs to be uh, dynamic in nature. And as it says here on the slide, that includes location and speed. Let's say you have sensors on the vehicle, so vehicle will have different speeds, you know, from 10 kilometers to 100 kilometers. It will keep on changing, location will keep on changing, so it should be uh, uh, able to change dynamically. It should be uh, susceptible to dynamic changes. So the enormous scale, the number of devices that needs to be managed and that communicate with each other will be at least an order of maybe larger than the devices that are to the current internet. Now the ratio of communication triggered by devices as compared to communication triggered by humans is increasing. So now we have more number of devices communicating 
with each other than the human beings. So, if you remember from G to G3, it was always the human beings that will initiate a call or uh, you know, sending some data. But here, with the IoT revolution, we are seeing the, the devices talking to each other. So, they're moving on. So, this slide shows us how what, and what is the ratio of, you know, uh, how human beings number of devices have uh, changed over the years, not the devices, really. So in, if I look at this slide, in figure number one, the, in 2003, the world population was approximately 6.3 billion. And there were around 500 million connected devices. If I take the ratio to connected devices per person, I get a figure of 0 0.08. So it's about 8% of the human population. So around 2007-2008, this number came out to be equal. In 2010, uh, our world population was estimated at 6.8 billion, whereas the connected devices were estimated at 1.5 billion. So there's already a factor of approximately close to 2 we were getting there. 2015, the world population stood at 7.2 billion, whereas connected devices were 25 billion. So we were at three, around 3.5 uh, times the, uh, the, the uh, connected devices. So there are no more number of devices than the human beings. And in 2020, this figure was about 6.5, it's about close, like getting close to 7 times the human population. So as we go forward, we will expect only around 2025, it will be maybe close to 10 times the human. So we have, uh, after the human population of 7.6 or 8 billion, the devices will be around 80 billion devices. So uh, uh, our customers are going very fast. So then, anything of an IoT uh, startup that we're going to develop, it should be scalable. So IoT as such is not a new technology. As to the IoT, in uh, terms of uh, uh, Internet of Things, it has been known for the last 16 years or if you even, even more. An idea came around 1970 that the, the devices need to be connected. And then um, uh, around late 1990s or the in 2000, we would hear words like progressive computing, embedded internet, and internet was very hot technology at that time, very new and very hot technology. A lot of you know, e-commerce and things were uh, in the start at that time. And I thought it was a bit too early to the bubble burst. And now, 2010, we, all, we saw the, the big growth in e-commerce in India as well. Uh, so now, uh, in the year 1999, Kevin uh, used to work for Procter & Gamble, uh, PNC being a uh, you know, uh, uh, company more into uh, FMCG products, uh, uh, you know, pharmaceutical or uh, other things like cosmetics and, and uh, dairy products and all. Today, uh, there Kevin was working, looking to optimize the supply chain of the business. So he had an idea of using RFID. So these RFIDs are an near field communication based uh, things we are using uh, so much these days, you know, in uh, getting access to this or even working with credit cards and they're also getting these three technologies uh, in uh, metro station and other stations. We just need to tap the card and then they're going. So this technology was really uh, uh, taken shape around this early, uh, with around mid, yeah, around, yeah, early 2000 uh, already, yes, yes. I yeah. saw so, some, yeah, you can, yeah, seeing up on some places that are already using this. Uh, but because of the internet was very hot in late 1990s, he and he, my favorite said, okay, Internet of Things, these things will be connected to Internet. Now, uh, now it got attention of PNG executives, but the word IoT still you know, remains, uh, I'll say, buried. It didn't come out for another 10 years. It became so popular. And uh, probably if Mr. Kevin was working for one of the technology companies like Microsoft or Google, it might have come, it might have, might have come out earlier. But anyways, that's the history about IoT. But uh, let us look at some of the challenges of deploying an IoT network. So implementing an IoT, again, is not an easy task by, uh, by any means. We can use smaller ones in our home something, but if you want to really scale it and do, and, or maybe try to you know, um, 
um, that is not the full potential, then we need something like what the body can uh, think for the So to understand the gravity of this task, we'll look at five major components of an IoT implementation. So we have the first one is sensor, second one is network, standard, intelligent and decision, intelligent action. So the first one we'll cover is sensor. Now, uh, as I said, in IT, you know, uh, yeah, in this program, you are know, and I think most of us, um, as faculties, are not with the number of IT, uh, one of the sections. Um, so I typically came up with his own definition for sensor. So define a sensor as an electronic device that produces electrical, optical, or digital data derived from a physical condition or an event. Uh, then uh, they said the data producing sensor is electronically transformed by another device uh, into <coughs> information output that is used in decision making. So here still the focus is on converting the data from one form to another so from, from let's say using uh, so converting from let's say optical to electrical and then uh, different forms. But as we are going forward, we will probably in the future, but now a lot of this computer is moving towards optical domain itself. So we might see an optical sensor and the network in optical as well, maybe using optical fiber. Or if it is indoor environment, it might be using visible light communication. So it might be all optical, there may not be a need to convert the optical to electrical, but as we stand today, yes, so processors, uh, all the number sensing that happens on the limit, it all is happening in the electronic domain. So it is converted to electrical uh, domain, so it can write and then, uh, you know, hand it. But uh, it, it is possible in the future, in the future, still possible to do everything in optics. Now let us look at two different uh, broad classification of the sensor. There's an access sensor and a passive sensor. Now an access sensor uh, is the one where uh, it will apply some you know, power source. So you know, and like in, in COVID times, we saw we use of pulse oximeter. So it is a sensor, but it is active sensor. We use a battery to operate. Similarly, our uh, no, uh, BP machines, sugar machines that are now you know, even used at home, they are all access sensors. Uh, some of the temperature measurement, like the thermometer and other things, they are all access uh, sensors. Now, passive sensors would be something like which is generating power by itself. So one example could be a piezoelectric one. That we have seen, uh, some of might have seen in uh, YouTube and other places where uh, people are putting it on the floor, uh, let's say in a shopping uh, center you know, uh, or even in a busy place like a railway station or something, you can put it on the floor and people step on it, produces some electrical energy and it can be used for pounding the people by itself. So it is a sensor uh, which can be used for multiple for generating electricity plus also uh, counting the number of people or, or the moment, the number of steps that has offered in, on that uh, electric map. Other examples could be your uh, sensor checking for, let's say, the wind speed. Uh, for sunlight, so we have solar panels. They could be, uh, you know, also used for, or some value can be kind of calibrated for living. So it can tell you the how much light is there is uh, coming from the sun. So these, these type of sensors, like flow meters, might be you know, in, in, within the pipe system. And the fluid this going through, you know, it uh, moves so fast and it's internet its own like So there, these are classified as uh, you know, sensors. Now, uh, so we have seen already the purpose of temperature and motion and all. So there are various uh, factors about the sensors. Then uh, sensors also need to look into the accuracy of the sensor uh, uh, as a user. Uh, if I'm doing the IoT deployment, I need to look at how much accurate the sensor I need. So um, let's say you are you know, purchasing uh, uh, salt or dal or rice or whatever. Some other okay. thing. So the way you will give you some value. Uh, uh, some value, which is okay. Maybe the accuracy of the point one is okay for you, or there might be some uh, variation of time. Okay, no, 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 no. Let us say you are going to do it for us. Um, uh, if the other application, like if you are measuring uh, gold or something more valuable, 
a network. Now, how can you connect to the network wirelessly or to wire mode? You can use a LAN um, on the scale as well. So, we can use if it's a local area network or wide area network or a um, uh, metropolitan area network. So, based on that, we can set up your uh, for routers and digits. Then, various technologies can be used. On the physical, it could be a Wi-Fi, uh, to use uh, low power Wi-Fi for uh, applications, Wi-Fi, uh, and the uh, for this, uh, there are some, uh, there will be some modifications in the second, then that one will come in the next two slides. And then, um, there is another paradigm of uh, Wi-Fi or visible light communication system. So they can, as I said, no, you could have in the future that everything even processing of it happens in the optic domain. So we have various types of, uh, you see the, the sense of the medium through which we can send this information back to the, um, center. So now this figure shows us how the data, uh, rate have increased. So, uh, on a one day we were about 2 kbps, we were not even saying, uh, 2 day around 14 to 64 kbps. We could do, we were not signaling, we could do voice transmission in real time and across the world we could talk to uh, people. 3G improved it even further, like some things like voice and video telephony. 4G increased it all, so everything moved to, to data. Uh, and the cost has been really low as uh, compared to what we used to pay for 3G services. Then uh, 5G, we are expecting even more changes there. Uh, and it is going to be a revolutionary. Uh, again, a revolutionary thing for the I mean, for the IoT, you can hear me okay, right? The voice is clear. Hello? Hello, so I'm on, I'm, I'm on the flight that says network. Uh, is, is that clear? Hello? Hello? Can you hear Hello? Me? Hello? Hello? Yes, my wife. Yes? yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, yeah, looking at the network, so we had, um, uh, adoption of, uh, LT networks where we have a high data rate. Uh, now we have, you know, low prices, virtualization is another technique which has really, you know, uh, helped and improved over the years. So we, uh, uh, have been a data center. So now you can, you need not now have your own, all set up with you. Uh, but you can always purchase some appliances, uh, from them. So if you want to increase the memory, or have more number of GPUs, you can always uh, borrow them or, you know, uh, or leave them uh, from Amazon and other uh, providers. Uh, and this has really, you know, increased this uh, application, like uh, 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 anything as a service or a software as a platform as a service. And, and the development on IPv6 is something which is uh, also underrated in most uh, presentations and all as well. But this is one of the technologies that has really, is enabling IoT revolution. Uh, so it, it, I mean, IPv6 was very, uh, uh, famous for, for around the late 1990s when the internet boom was happening. Uh, so a lot of, uh, migration of existing protocols started to happen around the late 1990s, 2000. But then, uh, there are not that many papers of it at that time. Uh, and they thought that IPv6 addressing is sufficient. But as we move towards the IoT revolution, it was realized that yeah, it is not sufficient. The IPv6 is a solution to it, and now I think there are some more modifications happening to it. But uh, the idea was to have an infinite number of IP addresses that can be generated. So IPv6 is a really you know, uh, interesting technology, which was uh, again not much success in the beginning, but later on everything moved to IPv6. Uh, uh, and nowadays, uh, we are using in the cloud-based services, our this portal of public to cloud-based services, we are using, you know, um, uh, WebEx or Google Meet or Google Workspace. So, 
strong moving towards the um, uh, you know, uh, internet networking and um, the other aspects are very uh, important for the IoT uh, setup. So here, the challenges faced by IoT is an almost close number of devices. So let's say today you put 100 sensors in the campus uh, to monitor different things, but as you uh, go to the utility, it might go to 200 or even increase. And so the network has to be uh, scalable. Then availability of network coverage, that's a challenge because if you have such a sensor uh, put in some part of the building, uh, so now we are seeing sensors to be built, you know, within, embedded within the building itself, when the buildings are being formed. So they will need, uh, the, I mean, uh, with the 5G, there's a API to have that space, you know, then you have to Life so it is using some kind of energy harvesting and all. So, uh, basically, I think that it is, sensor is embedded somewhere where the coverage or having a power cable may not be possible. So, case you look at some of these advanced techniques like energy harvesting and uh, simultaneous wireless information and power transmission. So, there are a lot of these new uh, techniques that are coming up. Uh, to be able to do this, and then we have a, a, a solution to network coverage is to using portative network. Uh, so let's say you have a vehicle which has different sensors. Now, if that vehicle is autonomous vehicle, and it goes to, you know, uh, to uh, uh, hills, uh, then it may lose connection. Uh, there are a lot of people you know, in uh, Nagpur and Bahrain. There is a lot of heart there, so you might lose connection in the, in advance, the and you know, uh, we can may go. Uh, may not be connected, or it can be supposed to some kind of in you know, cities and other places where uh, there's no connection. Okay. So, uh, using cooperative or some other techniques can be used for network, increasing network service. So, that is a challenge. Security as well, uh, you might have different sensors that are in a place outside. Uh, there might be some eavesdropper, somebody uh, uh, might uh, hack the system. Um, so, security is uh, another. Uh, if it is in this uh, area of, and then power surveillance is as I said, you know, uh, that, uh, that is in one of the applications for 5G is to have a, um, uh, um, a power, a battery life of five, uh, of 10 years. So, uh, battery 10 years currently is not, not feasible for all the applications. So, some applications where you know, the power is required, and there might be, you know, a provision for harvesting that's from sun or RF harvest, and then, uh, it is, uh, physical. It's physical to have uh, that is kind of setup. Now, the third case, once you have got the connection and all, then uh, of course you're going to use some kind of a standard to send this information. So, the standards, uh, I said, when I did in the beginning, right, when you talk about IPv and IP3. Now, standards are the ones which um, are enabling actually our ICT revolution because it's not that, you know, like, uh, 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 in India, we have a different standard than, you know, uh, uh, other places have different standards. And then we could not use our, you know, telecom equipment at all. So there are so many sharpness of these protocols to happen. Uh, but here, uh, because of the standardization, a lot of us are using the same standards across the world. And uh, the same thing can be used for our IoT setups. So we could, let's say, have a farm somewhere in Africa or wherever, but you can still monitor it in in India again because whatever information, whatever data is being transmitted is encapsulated or, co or covered within different packet sizes or different uh, protocols. But because it's standardized protocols, anybody can understand. So you can understand, you can have different uh, you know, uh, uh, equipment from different manufacturers as well. You can still, still understand the same uh, uh, protocol because they're again complying to a standard. So some other typical example of standard would be like Wi-Fi. Uh, we so for that, for telecom protocols, the SPTP, SPTC, or uh, uh, others. Now, along with the standards, uh, there is a need for regulation, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, someone can say that, yeah, okay, they are compliant to a standard, but they may not think that maybe. And there are also concerns these days about security and privacy of the data. So that, um, needs to be regulated how the security and the uh, privacy is handled in the, in the network. So, like in the States, they have uh, a fair uh, information practices, uh, uh, HIPAA, uh, and also here, um, and they also, like we have uh, the Bharat uh, standards so, uh, for the, for the 
uh, mostly for the electrical uh, you know, connections and cables because we have the only an ISI model. So those are different uh, 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 similar to regulatory bodies. And then we have internal we have TRI, right? So it's just regulation as well. That if, if, if they are saying that the base system is going to spend uh, reducing from you know, this decibel uh, or this frequency, then they should be compliant to the thing. Similarly, for different hand and as well, uh, they need to be compliant with that standard. Now, there is actually no such standard we see in the, uh, in, I mean, uh, in the conversation world. Uh, we really see the networking, but others, others, you know, we're building analytics and all, they're still um, not there. Um, but yeah, that's how it has to so standard. Like for uh, handling data, there are still, okay, uh, these are applications like uh, uh, SQL, so, uh, for example, emission databases or no SQL, then it's unsafe for data. That is right. But privacy and security is still uh, very open. Uh, and uh, uh, our people do their own implementation. Um, now I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm not sure, let's uh, go to this to the fourth case. Oh, this is the one we have collected the, the data. Uh, we have a sensor. We pass it to give a name, some kind of sensor. So three parts are covered. Four part is intended to listen. So once we've collected all this information, what do we do? We have to process and analyze and take some action. So uh, this stage of analysis um, um, uh, is called this intended analysis. So nowadays, the machine learning and AI is uh, an algorithm. To learn and make more, more uh, to uh, understand more or more different forms of information we can use, uh, voice data. So, for example, I could see we want to do a uh, predictive or prescriptive analytics. So, we can have, uh, let's say, for example, like a computer vision, we are, we are trying to identify different objects, things, or uh, activities in a map. So, this one can be handled by a uh, computer vision using uh, a machine learning type of technique. So, our natural language processing is referred to somebody's ability to work with the that's the way that we will do that, extracting meaningful information from text, and even generating text that is readable. Um, speech recognition, we have been doing it for many years, so some of these uh, uh, things could be used. Let's say in case of, uh, uh, we had, you know, uh, in, in, the, in the COVID era, uh, some places they have used um, CCTV to, or, uh, or some audio things to find out uh, how many people are actually congregating. So there is a, uh, from the camera you can see how many people and then you can apply one of these uh, algorithms to find out how many people are there. So estimate the number of people or let's say you know, social distancing is maintained or, or not. So these are the, uh, some of the analytics models that can be, uh, that, that where the application is right for uh, uh, so AI. Models have been used to uh, implement them, but again, you need to know how to use it. That's one of the challenges. Uh, that's in the next slide. Okay. Then, both of approaches. So, one of the uh, examples that we saw being used very commonly was use of RLG32 app. Right? In India, we use it uh, quite, quite often. So, we don't uh, know where the people are. So, so data. People are putting their own data in there's a positive or a negative space or something, and then um, you would know that you know where the uh, the person is, how close it is. Um, similarly, we have uh, used Google Maps to do the direction, so that's also a lot of the data that goes into the Google Maps, which tells us the real time information if there's a you know, traffic jam or something is as uh, uh, close. Okay, so we uh, also have a previous text here, we can click on it, and then uh, the next person who is planning their journey, they cannot plan accordingly. They know there is a delay of 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 10 weeks are there at the moment. So, a uh, lot of this information nowadays is coming to talk about. So, uh, so real time, uh, they got to think in analytics. Everything is not going to think, but uh, there are things like as I was talking about the um, traffic monitoring or management. It gives real-time information, right? If it is processed after now, think to that possibly change. So these are some of the challenges that have uh, been faced, uh, or uh, uh, challenges for adoption of uh, adoption of intelligent analytics within IoT is uh, the inaccurate analysis due to flaw in 
they got a lot of so you need to be uh, someone skilled in this uh, area to understand the um, uh, the models. There are so many models available for you know, machine learning. And which one is uh, which algorithm is put in? That is something that you know, someone who has worked in this area would be able to tell you uh, easily. Or uh, at least think you can try one to three of the models uh, and then see if you can just do better. So that so things like there will be some outliers. So how do you handle the outliers? Sometimes they're not important. Sometimes they're not important. So um, I think not one algorithm can be. So, legacy systems, um, now that is a common way to have a legacy system, then they may not be able to receive the unstructured data that is coming from various sensors in IoT net, network uh, or setup. Um, because let's say you are doing a setup in your uh, campus, so you have various departments, they have a different uh, need, uh, and if somebody in agriculture might have need for uh, humidity or doing the Level of uh, the testing side of manure or some nutrients in the uh, soil, then uh, the other departments um, uh, which require the temperature control to be there at various different degrees. So, having let's say getting all the information central source, then uh, having this unstructured data might be an in, 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 uh, issue because you're not going to or put them in the same uh, way. Uh, then legacy systems to handle again real time because there's a lot of uh, analytics that needs to be done and it has to be done in some cases in real time as well. So some cases you can do it offline, that is fine, you can collect the data, we can process it. So many times in the research area we will you know, we'll be collecting the, the data from an open source or some other, we only do it around uh, uh, test. So here we are collecting the information and then processing it later. But when it comes to uh, real-time applications where it is required immediately, then uh, there's a different set of conditions of the location. So for example, let's say you're doing imaging for looking for cancer or something else, or let's say there's some issue with uh, uh, like maybe for plants to eat and all. So there it is uh, only not required to tell immediately you know, what is it. So it's not the same as uh, uh, let's say making a decision by uh, autonomous people. If, if it has to stop or take a right hand or left hand. So it can be, but uh, in some applications there is a need for a immediate uh, action. Uh, now this small typo here, so this is an intelligent um, action, like, so the title should be said to, to be as intelligent action. So here, uh, uh, in intelligent action, we are saying that machine to machine, machine to human, actions can take place. So this is with the coming up of new advanced uh, uh, user interface and user experience technology. So factors driving adoption of intelligent action should be lower uh, as the machine prices and tools must be in performance. So machines are going to talk to each other. Uh, and of course, a deep learning uh, tools. That is already happening. If you're trying to do, let's say, automation of a, uh, of a factory uh, floor, then uh, machines can talk to each other. They can uh, set up, uh, let's say there was a fire or something, some machine can tell the other machine to switch off uh, uh, in the network, uh, in the before or after, and uh, maybe sit on the spring press, the fire, uh, the water spring press automatically. So, and where, where there is no need for, there's no even requirement of a human intervention, machine can talk to each other. So that's one of the things that in the industry 4.0 uh, revolution. So 4.0 see, without the ICT technologies, without uh, IoT technology, it cannot uh, happen. And I'll, see, I'll show you a few more slides that uh, IoT uh, networks or IoT knowledge is required in that particular area. So these are just the five uh, major things which are required for an IoT setup. So IoT is an ecosystem of ever increasing complexity. It is the next phase of innovation. Um, in summary, so convergence of technology to make IoT implementation much easier and faster, uh, which in turn will improve the aspects of our life and uh, working uh, extent. It is already making changes. So some of these IoT components are things which are, say, vehicles, uh, human body, um, so things as the sediments are open, <laughs> uh, uh, 
the so it cannot be classified as uh, an ecological uh, building. It is vital building a uh, human body uh, as well. So, so we are researching on we are researching on uh, the uh, molecular communication. So that is about how the, even the human body we can uh, communicate. So there are various applications uh, within the human body as well. We are we are, we are, we are getting for things. So there could be some in future we will probably have you know, some uh, machines or some uh, uh, sensors or uh, activities that is within the human uh, body as well to uh, do the targeted drug delivery and the situation of the human being or even telling you the real statistics about you know, BP sugar or other levels as well. Um, and other things that are happening right now where we see IoT introduced bulk washing machine. Uh, so for example, in the fridge, the fridge could tell you that uh, you are running short of milk. It may even order the milk for you. That can also happen automatically. Like you know, we have seen them in uh, our printers these days. In get printers, they they tell us that yeah, you are running low on the ink. We would like to order, so you can go online and order from uh, HP or Canon. You know, directly you can go to the website and order it. Uh, some of these things will be also automatic. So instead of washing machine, like we want, let's see the foundation of IoT between our our systems and all. Uh, and now it's also, you see, uh, this is, you know, in advertisements as well. In, uh, uh, in, in television, when you look at uh, advertisements for air clinic here, so what is this and all that thing, it's IoT enabled. Uh, so, a lot of these things are already happening. We are seeing them coming to our daily life. Now, sensors, uh, there are various types of sensors and some examples, and some of them you can actually find out that they are probably already there in your smartphone. So, we have our GPS. Accelerometer, gyroscope, temperature, uh, for speed and RPM, heart rate, uh, light intensity, RFI. So there's a lot of these sensors, they're already, uh, there. Okay, so now we'll look at another figure. So, this is giving us a full overview of an IoT architecture. So we have, you know, boxes there. Um, not going to say any particular technology, but there are various technologies that can fit into one of these boxes. So, but if you look at the top, we have the top blue says things. So that is where the cyber physical boundaries are there. Where the physical world, uh, with human being or the environment that we are living in, that's where that's the things are. And then there is a device. So within the device, the two things that interact with the outside world are sensors and actuators. So sensors, uh, we thought with the forms of data, so sensors will collect this information from outside world, outside environment, and actuators are the ones that will do some action. So for example, I told you about this, you know, um, like a sprinkler, automatic sprinkler, or even automatic you know, braking system in case yes, of autonomous uh, vehicles. So these are some of the examples of actuators. Uh, there is one slide in which we can tell uh, a few more. Then once the sensors have collected data, then they are all, anyways, it's, it's part of an electronic system that's run to uh, some kind of a CPU. Um, and that, you know, could be anything. So I'm not, not saying that you use Raspberry Pi, Arduino, or your Intel machine, uh, or Mac. So it could be anything that we can do compute for you. Then running an operating system on it. And after this, uh, there has to be some connectivity. For Internet of Things set up, we need to have connectivity to the network. And after there's some data uh, transport protocols that are there, how to get there, and then it finally end up in the Internet. And after that, because the data is all collected, we need to store this data somewhere. Uh, there, uh, we can use the same type of data basis. So we, uh, in a moment, we have passed away or various other uh, forms. Uh, then we have to process this data. Some of us, uh, use MATLAB for processing this data, some use uh, cloud-based services, uh, um, some nowadays uh, there's a lot of, essentially there's a lot of uh, things available online on the cloud you can use uh, to analyze this data, so we can use Python and other, other various platforms to do this. So application servers and middleware, now these uh, are the ones where you can do the billing information uh, or 
navigational remote control of it. Okay, so there is a service is which are running there, the uh, controlling there on the WL, and then finally there is a plugin system because nowadays we uh, uh, use different types of UI, different platforms. You can have it on the mobile phone or web, and mobile phone also Android, iOS, or other uh, Windows one, and then there is a desktop market as well. So we need to, we can have set up in different uh, ASP and applications. Some of the components for a uh, uh, so think about activators would be motor, uh, for example, in, at, in autonomous vehicle uh, or autonomous drone. Uh, we are doing some action in the physical world that should be done by motor as well. There are different uh, LEDs are there. Uh, then uh, different uh, speakers, brake controllers are, are there. Uh, so you could use any of these, you know, uh, uh, one. Right. Uh, so now uh, let us look at the other. Uh, so let me just go back. Just, yeah. Uh, so for autonomous vehicle passenger, there will be this uh, brake controller. So now there are various devices. This and next. Yeah. Okay. So we have different devices. And components. So we have a CPU uh, board, we have Arduino, uh, it will be Raspberry Pi, Intel Edition, uh, Qualcomm, uh, so there are various types of uh, hardware that can be used. And different OSs, so it will be Linux, uh, FedEx, ARM, uh, and Backfield, Arduino, so there are various uh, platforms that could be used. And then for uh, other type of communication, so media access would be through 2G, 3G, 4G, now 5G. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, Dash, then uh, uh, data transfer could be HTTP or some other forms of um, uh, transfer protocol. Then of course, get the internet. So now I'll change a little bit to the connectivity solution. Now, currently, we are most of us are on CP or 4G. Um, so using NT, NT in advance or NT, but uh, we are in that uh, region at the moment. Uh, the technology is still, so we can move it towards 5G later on. Then in MD IoT, it's called as narrowband IoT. So uh, the reason why we want to go here was that it was also as as was before that it was seen that we need to have a, a, a setup where uh, uh, an ICT infrastructure where we are expecting you know, billions of devices to be connected. Now, if I use the current technology, like NTE or even Wi-Fi now, they are all doing a fixed allocation of uh, the time and uh, frequency uh, to different users or different devices. So it is still doing a fixed allocation. But all the devices may not have the same need. Right here we have, let's say, different sensors. So some of the sensors which are doing temperature sensors, they need only a few maybe of information every hour or so. Whereas if you are watching an IPL match or watching a football match or watching film or TV, you need high uh, in, you know, MBTS download speed and all the time. So this program, we need this. Right. Uh, so there are different application uses here. So let's say you're doing a deployment of a 4 g based IoT setup. Now uh, you might have different sensors in your, in your campus, you have different SIM cards, it's all there, they're sending information to the uh, base station, but they're all using the same slot. But their use is very small and intermittent. So then uh, uh, it was realized that because with this revolution, we don't really need uh, so some of these setups, we don't really need so much of bandwidth uh, given to them. And uh, computer will also be responsible based battery as well. But here, uh, there was a permission to post from the least 13 onwards of uh, uh, 4G. Where, uh, there was a branch from the standard. Uh, and that branch was basically to work on the narrowband IoT. So here, uh, the, the TV then says narrowband because we use a smaller band to do uh, uh, communication between the sensors and all. So hence it was called as an NB IoT because it is designed for an IoT setup where there is a need for small data rate at smaller time and, uh, larger time intervals 
and there is um, um, relaxed requirements on latency, retardation, mobility. So it was basically the first time it was designed, it was designed for a very static type of environment where you have sensors as a kind of field or a campus type of environment. So other uh, uh, things, because it was coming from the, the GSM or the same uh, the family of uh, the it was basically trying to reform the existing GSM to transfer brain. Uh, there was no need for existing one. Uh, they started to use a very narrow system of 180 kilohertz in the uplink. Most of these sensors are going to be sending things in the uplink, then uh, require a follow down. They can also require a very small a single subcarrier. So there's no need for, let's say, you know, a full OSM uh, uh, subcarrier in some case, you know, like in uh, 1024 subcarrier. So it will be a fixed subcarrier. There's no, no need for that. They only use one subcarrier, which is capable of handling up to 180 so kilo. And a uh, lot of these uh, definitions were also driven through the NTE. So things like channel uh, coding, modulation, higher layer protocols, they're all borrowed from the, they're all borrowed from uh, NTE uh, definitions. But they were nice. There was no need for a connected state mobility or voice. So there was, you have, let's say this, this user equipment or device is connected to a 4G network, to NB IoT network, but you are not doing any real time processing. You are not even to make a small voice call. So that, that, that's when you can, you know, save, uh, on the, on the metric device as well, but still able to have a IoT setup. Then later on, there were additions to, uh, this as, uh, you know, this goes on. Uh, in the recommendation, there were at least 14, then there was at least 15, where the, the requirements constant to the different applications, so data rates was improved, um, multicast was added, uh, positioning was introduced, and in the least 15, uh, there were required improvements in the latency in power uh, consumption features. So it is again evolving. So, uh, uh the MD uh, IoT here, um, it can be installed in your smartphones, smartphones and other places. But if you look at here, so this, <laughs> in 4G, we started to talk about MD And then there was a uh, common branch where the standard board upgraded to 4.5G and, and all. So here, uh, in case of 5G, what we are expecting is what we are going to have actually is three different uh, banks. So they are all driven by different industry verticals for different needs. Someone might need a higher rate, but low mobility, someone may need a uh, higher rate, uh, and low distances, but someone may need a you know, larger distance to be covered, but then with a lower data rate, or might have a requirement for a high mobility, with a lower, that lower data rate, or energy. So there are various industry verticals, which are quite different things, so the solution is crazy, which will give different options to be used for different services. And they all come under the same standard, that is, uh, the whole umbrella standard for smartphones is one application. Smartphones, uh, not only with connected products, such as, uh, which will make all like, like, we are already seeing a lot of, uh, things happening. A lot of these, uh, you know, uh, consumer products, software like Samsung, uh, yeah, they're all going you know, into IoT. The second big market we are seeing is, uh, you know, variables. There's some smartwatches, uh, and all, uh, are moving. From uh, smartwatches from the Samsung, uh, Apple, and others to Google Glasses, you know, smart down and see, uh, allocated type like sensors. So this is something within. Um, and then we have applications like Smart City. So Smart City includes uh, traffic management for, let's say, water distribution, for waste management, um, you know, urban security, environment monitoring. Uh, smart Solutions for um, uh, elevating the real between So, there are some small cities without an IoT setup is not feasible. Um, then, application where IoT can be specified. Uh, Hello, yeah, can you hear me? So 
So smart grid is another uh, area uh, where let's say you need to, yeah, uh, so smart grid is another area where we are seeing that connectivity will be through different uh, uh, systems. So we have a, a wind generator and we have other um, uh, applications uh, here. So let us say you had uh, a power connection where let's say the uh, Connection got uh, under mouth, or uh, you know, you know, so then can quickly be uh, repaired uh, using a smart grid type of uh, you know setup. Now, uh, uh, let me just go here. Yeah. Um, let's move on to other applications. Uh, We have uh, IoT can be deployed in the same application system for market research. Uh, uh, so, so IoT for industry for industry 4.0 you know, cannot go without the uh, an IoT without uh, an IoT setup. Then we have applications like in our vehicle to vehicle communication. They all uh, uh, they run through the IoT setup. Then we have things like smart retail focused on. Uh, to the country, improving customer experience, optimizing supply chain uh, operations. Hello, is my voice clear? Is my yes, sir. You are yes, yes, sir. Yes, okay, 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 perfect. Okay. 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 Okay, perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, uh, take maybe over five more minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, you can continue uh, till twelve thirty, or if you want to uh, proceed with uh, till the time you complete your activity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll and go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you are comfortable with it. And then we do. Yeah, we do our Q and A. Um, yeah. Okay. Sure, sir. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so. Application IoT can be deployed. Um, so this is one application which is uh, going to come up uh, very big in the future. It's on smart farming. So we have farms for the future. We are uh, we're expecting sensors, you know, in uh, tractors, uh, uh, different uh, animals, and all. Then there's a survey drone. So they're all you know, connected to uh, to the network. So. Uh, and then we can have a small control center within a farmer's house, which is just a control a very large farm, uh, not possible for the person to go. So it can use server drone, it can go go to different parts in the farm and collect the you know, information from the different sensors pass uh, on the top and then uh, you know, give them here. Uh, then we try to uh, infrastructure, that is something we try to do anything is another application or we can do everything with another application. So we can have uh you see know, being more safer and, and uh, um, comfortable. We can uh improve the liability by using different type of sensors and too by using autonomous uh driving. We have uh no vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, vehicle to pedestrian Smart watch, you're wearing a smart watch, and uh, there's a, in a smart city, the vehicles are known. So, the vehicles and the uh, smart watch, they can, you know, turn it to the vehicle, it's over to the vehicle, it can alert the uh, driver or it can stop the vehicle. So, so, things can be done, and vehicle to vehicle communication can also help us with this uh, IoT uh, setup. Um, and again, yeah, traffic lights and parking places are all uh, smart. Uh, uh, so there is so a lot of uh, um, automation and improvement in our current systems can happen. For example, you see uh, in, place, in some places, uh, like especially about where uh, we have this pedestrian shopping area where pedestrian will press the button, the lights will change, and then they move. Uh, and some places they are like six, again like six other things. So based on the you know traffic or the need. The frequency of switching on and off the of the red to green uh, may change using again automatically in IoT setup. 
then 5G as an example, yeah, we have different, uh, so 5G will be another image that, in 5G we have different standards, like, you know, new radio standards. So for vehicle also there is a, uh, a sub-part that I get, so it will be 17, uh, and some millimeter away, uh, my more connectivity with the vehicle to, uh, across the system. Then there are other standards like IEEE 802.11c. So this one which is standard is based on a Wi-Fi uh, option. So this is also uh, uh, using the current 5G uh, or the future 5G setup. We, uh, as a parallel to that, we have IEEE standard which is 802.11c for vehicle to and communication. Um, then there are other alternative as well. So just see them. So, LoRAN is another technology, which I'll just touch base that you can uh, use it, which has become very popular in, especially in the agriculture type of application, smart agriculture. Um, um, the smart agriculture is there. Uh, you can connect to the agriculture, uh, no, you can connect your farming to uh, uh, LoRAN uh, type of setup. Then there is another uh, one um, where you know, smart city is coming. It is based on technology similar to city uh, where they are doing communication lower than the noise uh, level, so very small thing. So in agriculture somehow it has made a like, lot of uh, inroads. Also in smart cities or farm, uh, in um, let's say remote areas where uh, we have different IoT setups. Uh, but they are connected very far away. It's not that any users are there, but uh, whatever users are there, but they are very far away. So that is uh, where Loran has really made a difference. It's a separate type of standard than, than to a Loran alliance. Uh, so there's a uh, that's a context. So sensors usually are interested in monitoring environmental factors, such as temperature humidity, as well as health condition of the livestock. And, um, Chemical condition as well. So that's where Loran is uh, really making and making inroads. Uh, then this is one example that shows there is a, a user it is connected to REST or other API. And then we have uh, an apply from uh, different livestock. So as I said, you know, testing calls or uh, as just a uh, example, but basically there are some sensors there which are collecting information about the health of a cow or both or whatever you have it on your on uh, farm and sending their uh, health or other information to the uh, lower end cloud. Uh, similarly for the uh, plants and other type of deployments too. And then in downlink, there's an activation process where there's sprinklers and other, uh, which can be used. So similar thing can be done to lower end as well, or to MDIOT or to IEEE standards. So there are various one of them, but this is as you know, as one of the technologies to very Getting very popular in this way, you can purchase all the shell component, connect them together, and start um, uh, working on large, you know, large forms kind of uh, application. Um, so uh, similar to the yeah, so I typically, yeah, they got I11, some flavor as well of uh, 11, which is what we're working on this uh, 11DA, to so work on the uh, smart radio as well for uh, IoT applications. Um, so they are basically using low power and do communication. Right? Uh, so smartphones, so let's get this one. Um, then there are IEEE, again, there's another standard on P6274 uh, for, uh, for body area networks, for human body for wireless communication, uh, looking at 30 megahertz to 60 megahertz ranges. Uh, then P19012. Uh, then there is IP standard. Then, uh, yeah, just to explain so at the last one. This is standard. So ITU has its own standard. Uh, this Y410 and Y2213. And you remember Y2060 was for the definition of IoT. So they basically chose. Thank you. 
था तो Thank <laughs> you. 